Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about the Dawnbreaker for Mythic Plus in The War Within. I've been testing all the dungeons thoroughly on beta, and I wanted to make a quick and easy to understand guide for all of the important mechanics. Remember that this is for Mythic Plus difficulty, so some of the mechanics might be missing if you're running this dungeon on normal or heroic. This dungeon is Blizzard's most ambitious creation, utilizing dragon riding to traverse the city and move from place to place, even fighting in a flying boat in the air. As of testing, you can actually mount and fly around the dungeon even in combat once you clear the first boss. There's lots of really nasty debuffs and single target damage in this dungeon, so bring as many personal defensives and ideally a good healer if possible. Hopefully you have someone in your group that can lead the way because this dungeon can be difficult to traverse without knowing exactly what's going on. Although it is quite short and contains only three bosses, it can be one of the most stressful dungeons to survive and will definitely put your team to the test. The first objective is to make your way to the Dawnbreaker ship. Although there are mobs all around the starting area, many of them do not need to be eliminated and do not award enemy forces. Proceed forward and clear the mobs that appear in your way. The Nightfall Ritualist is the scariest mob here, occasionally targeting two players with Tormenting Ray, dealing heavy damage over a short channel that cannot be disrupted. This mob also puts out a seed debuff which deals damage but it can be immediately dispelled. The Shadow Mage should be kicked since there isn't too much else going on that needs to be kicked in this pull. Since it's the start of the dungeon, very likely everyone will have damage available and big cooldowns to blast these mobs quickly. Make your way to the boat and deal with the six mobs near the middle and back of the ship, including another Ritualist. These Ritualists can be deceptively tough, so don't be afraid to use your bigger cooldowns here. Once you clear this pack, you need to take flight and destroy the two ships surrounding the Dawnbreaker. There are a lot of caster bolts going off in these packs, so try and disrupt them when you can. The main mechanic is Bursting Cocoon, which targets a random player with a 5 second debuff that deals damage over time and then a large amount of burst damage at the end. It's a good idea to use a personal defensive if you ever get this on you. Clear the pack and then click on the bomb on each of the two boats in order to make the first boss spawn back on the Dawnbreaker. Speaker Shadow Crown is a simple but punishing fight where the main objective is managing your space correctly. The main mechanic is Obsidian Beam. The boss will first perform a heavy tank hit and then spin beams around the room, dealing lethal damage if you're hit. The reason this gets difficult is the boss also randomly targets two players with Collapsing Knight, forming a giant rift portal at their location. This generally favors ranged players, so when this cast is about to go out, you want to try and stand far away from the boss in order to give your team a clean path during the beams. As a tank, you may need to move the boss around the room if portals start to block your passageway. The boss also applies a debuff that when dispelled creates a healing absorb on the party. This absorb is quite small currently and isn't too much to deal with, just keeping the healer busy. At 50% and 0% health, the boss will channel a giant darkness explosion on the boat. You must get on a flying mount and ride away during the explosion in order to survive. At 0% health, once the boss starts channeling this explosion again, the fight is basically over. You can mount and begin flying to the next area. Once the speaker is destroyed, you then need to take to the corrupted city of Hollowfall and defeat the three lieutenants to weaken the second boss. These guys are in specific locations marked on your map. I would recommend marking your group leader with world markers and possibly using the ping system to make it clear where your team is looking to land since it can be quite difficult to see where everybody is midair. The first mini boss is in a church style building with lots of mobs surrounding it. You do need to kill a little bit of extra optional stuff in this area for enemy forces, so we found going here first and using our bloodlust when it comes off cooldown was a good option. All throughout this area, there are mobs that do very nasty single target debuff damage, named Abyssal Rot and Abyssal Blast. These abilities cannot be removed and must be powered through with big healing and defensives. It can be very difficult to pull large numbers of these mobs because of how many of these debuffs actually go out. These manifested shadows are one mob that has this debuff and they can also pulse group damage, so watch out for overlaps when you might be getting affected by both attacks. These packs also contain 
various swirlies, frontals, and single target bolts that can be interrupted. The Shadow Walkers are mobs that hit your tank very hard with Umbral Rush, and because of the heavy group damage, it was very hard to keep the tank alive, we ended up avoiding these mobs as much as possible. After the entrance to the church is clear, you can fight the first mini boss. Each mini boss has a preview mechanic of what's about to come for the second boss. This one casts Terrifying Slam, a tank buster that deals damage in a large circle around the tank. This means any melee should ideally stand max melee range and the tank needs to move out during the hit. The tank also eats a pretty hefty knockback, so be careful about your positioning when getting hit to be sure that you don't pull any additional packs. This mini boss also has a single target debuff that it casts frequently, so it can be difficult to fight with any more mobs without bloodlust or an organized group. We found this area around the church to have some of the most dense trash and least likelihood to accidentally pull other stuff, so we made sure we cleared extra mobs here so that we had enough enemy forces before we left. The next mini boss is in the inn by the underpass. If you are careful, you can sneak it out without pulling too much trash, but you may decide to play things a bit more carefully here. This mini boss showcases Dark Orb. The orb targets a random player, grows large in size, and then shoots towards them. When the orb collides with a wall or a large object, it will explode, dealing large damage to anyone nearby. The goal here is to aim the orb far away in a straight path where it won't run into anything. This is part of the reason we fight it here by the underpass. Considering this mob also has a single target damage over time debuff, you're at high risk of dying when you have this abyssal blast and then the orb gets shot out. So look to press the defensive or be ready to self-heal. An important note is that you don't want to come in contact with the dark orb. Touching the orb doesn't explode it, but it puts another incredibly damaging debuff on your character that lasts the entire 15 seconds. Around this area, there are also patrolling spiders or crabs or something. They pull players in with a web and then do a large AoE ground effect. Like the dangerous tank buster mobs I mentioned earlier, we found these really difficult to fight with any other mobs, and generally we skip them at all costs. The last mini boss is in House 14 up on the hill and the other side of town. This boss casts Shadowy Decay, a large pulsing group damage ability. There are large damage over time debuffs going out here, so be sure to be careful if you have one of these during the group damage. Hopefully you guys are seeing a pattern here. You get heavy debuffs and also heavy group damage. This spot is by far the easiest to accidentally pull random mobs and things can get really scary, so try and be conscious about your positioning when you have to move from the frontal attack. Thanks. After all three lieutenants are defeated, you can fight the second boss. This guy randomly patrols everywhere around the city. You can technically fight it in different spots, but because of the dark orb attack from earlier, you want to make sure that you have a clear path to move around and no mobs nearby. I think it was intended to fight him here in this long stretch of a path leading up to the mini boss that was just defeated. This boss casts the abilities from all three mini bosses. Dark orbs must be aimed away to reduce the damage from the explosion. We use the path down towards the city, but other angles can work like off the cliff. The slam tank buster must be taken out of the group and may require some healing. Don't forget about the knockback as well. Having the tank get knocked into the wall can be helpful so that the boss doesn't move around too much, especially before that dark orb cast. Lastly, shadowy decay deals very heavy group damage. This is mainly where you want to use your big healing cooldowns and defensives. Make sure you're topped up quickly after each dark orb explosion because the shadowy decay damage comes in quick. The boss will also periodically animate some adds during the fight, but honestly this didn't do too much and they get quickly cleaved down by the DPS. This fight can be incredibly difficult with huge amounts of group damage. It took us quite a few attempts when we were learning this dungeon. Group protection abilities from all group members such as Anti-Magic Zone, Zephyr, Mass Barrier, and Rallying Cry can make a huge difference in helping out the healer. Once the second boss is down, you can fly back up to the Dawnbreaker. You want to have at least 95% enemy forces here, so finish up a couple mobs down below if you happen to be short. On the Dawnbreaker, there's a Dark Architect that can be incredibly lethal. Similar to the Ritualist from the start of the dungeon, this mob will target two players and deal large amounts of damage to them over a short channel. This also deals area of effect damage, so you want to be spread out or else you can blow each other up quite quickly. This mob also summons adds while you're fighting it. The adds don't deal very much damage, and the main problem is just the beam that targets players because it recasts so quickly. 
After the boat is clear, the final boss, Rashanan, grabs hold of the boat. Similar to the rest of the dungeon, this boss is a two-phase fight that is quite simple mechanically but can deal heavy amounts of unavoidable damage. Rolling Acid targets a random player and spawns a wave on top of them, traveling either left or right. The solid line shows you where the wave spawns and the rectangle gradient shows you where the wave is traveling. This means you want to place the solid line in between the boss and the rectangle so that it doesn't hit any other party members. Erosive Spray puts a debuff on all party members dealing damage over time. This comes out quite frequently and hits hard, so be sure to use your big AoE heals for these moments. In Phase 1, barrels will spawn on the ship. You want to click on them and then take them near the boss, then target the boss with your extra action button to detonate them. Any barrels that you do not handle will explode on the party, dealing extra damage. Once you detonate 6 barrels on the boss, the intermission starts. Rashanon flies away and you need to mount up and pursue. This part has changed a few different times on beta, mostly it's just supposed to be easy and you just fly through the orbs to not get surrounded by darkness or whatever. Once you make it to the end platform, you can land and interrupt the boss cast. Phase 2 is very similar to Phase 1, just with a slightly different mechanic. Instead of the barrels, two players are targeted with spinneret strands. If you're targeted, you want to go out of the group and drop these to the side. When you drop them, however, you get stuck in this large puddle on the ground, dealing damage over time. You want to save a movement ability for getting out of these webs, or pop a defensive cooldown as you can take significant damage here. Other than the added puddle, it's basically the same fight. Heal through the erosive spray, take the rolling acid out of the group, and finish the boss. The boss runs away at 60% health, so don't get intimidated by its large health pool. Once you get there, you should get taken via boat back to the Dawnbreaker to collect your loot. That wraps up my guide of the Dawnbreaker in The War Within. If you think there is anything important that I missed, leave it in the comments for others to see. Thank you for watching, good luck out there, and happy keying.